All right, uh, the SmackDown show had uh, appearances noted by both Rock and, and John Cena. And uh, the Rock segment opened up the show. Like I said, this is the, thing, the thing is, man, do they need some freaking communication because they must have bleeped out. Every, I mean, they bleeped out so much of what Rock... Like, they decided to build the entire segment around the fans chanting asshole without finding out that Fox did not want that on the air. So they just, like, the fans were chanting asshole, asshole, and they're, you know, they're bleeping at, you know, not bleeping it. They just sound cut. There's sound cut after sound cut after sound cut. Then they came back for a promo, and Pat McAfee and The Rock are talking about, we could have had them chanting, you know, this. And they bleeped out, or they, they, they sound edited, like, half that promo, too. Well, it was, I don't have any inside information on this, but... I can say this. So what happened was, first, Pat McAfee comes out, and he's interrupted by Austin Theory, and Austin Theory says, this show is Austin Theory Live, and Pat McAfee says, no, this is the people's show, and you know what that means. And so The Rock's music, he, he comes out. and They so, went nuts for him, but as you would expect they would, but they went nuts for him. They went absolutely crazy. And so the, the thing with the... So he starts talking Austin Theory, and the big, the big key is he goes, so you're from A-Town, right? Well, that's fitting because you're an a-hole. So I think it's possible that when he then did the further promo and he says, you know, this half is going to chant, you are, and this chant is going to, or this half is going to chant, an asshole, he was supposed to say a-hole because that's what he did say earlier. They would have had no problems if that side of the building had chanted a-hole. But, but instead, they weren't going to. They wouldn't have chanted a hole. Well, the problem is, Rock, that, that, Rock said asshole anyway, so they were going to. But chant they wouldn't. It. They wouldn't have chanted a hole. They would have chanted asshole anyway. So, um, it, yeah, you know. So you had one half of the audience, and it was funny because, like, the first time I listened, to it, I thought, "Man, this crowd is a bunch of idiots. Like, they can't get this right." And then I went back and I realized, no, no, they they, they edited sound, they in. Sound, they sound. They sound out of cheers. And uh, so if you were there live, apparently it was awesome because one half chanted, you are, and then the other half chanted an asshole. And they went back and forth. And even Rock is laughing. And he goes, man, you guys were awesome at that. But the problem was, for those of us watching on television, it was just a, a sea of, of noise as, as apparently they were doing the chants or whatever. And, man, you couldn't hear anything. And then Rock would start talking and, you, you, they, like, he was silenced. And so, you know, I'm sure live it was really cool, but, you know, on television, the whole thing was kind of a disaster. And so, essentially, he, uh, he told... To, that's where I say, it's like, it's like that is like, it, it, again, that, that stuff needed to be cleared up before they ever went out there. You yeah. know what I mean? If, there's, if there are words that are not allowed to be said on that, on that station, um, they should not have said them. Um, and I'm sure that they didn't know, because it's not like he's doing it you know what I mean? Uh, to go, you know, it's not like Dwayne went out there to do something to, you know, screw with Fox. He didn't. It's like it was. This was the miscommunication of all miscommunications. And over. But here's the thing. So they do it the first time, okay? And it's all bleeped out and all that, right? They come back and do it again. So it's like, did nobody tell them between? You know what I mean? After they got back, that hey. This is all, all bleeped out? I mean, like, what did they tell him? Well, the second time they did it, it was during a meeting backstage with... Which might uh, have been a pre-tape for all we know. Yeah, with McAfee and, and Rock. So, yeah, A, it could have been a pre-tape. B, they could have just figured, we're backstage, like, it doesn't matter, you're not going to hear the crowd. But they were actually piping in the crowd, so they had to, to bleep the crowd again. And the but biggest was, but, issue, but, Dave... But they, still, but they still used the word. Here's the biggest issue. If this crowd decides that every time Austin Theory comes out, they're going to do this chant, there's going to be a problem because and this the, chant and, and that, is... And, and, and that could happen. ...clearly not uh, allowed by Fox. So, yeah, uh, yeah it was that was quite a segment. And then uh, Rock said, in three seconds, I'm going to whip your ass. And then he uh, Austin went after him. Rock hit him with the spine buster, people's elbow, told Pat McAfee to hit the people's elbow. Uh, McAfee hit it. Everybody went crazy. I mean, the reaction, Rock even said, like, one of the top five reactions I've ever got. And it sure sounded like it. I mean, these was, people was, went crazy when this guy's they, music they, hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we had Finn Balor and AJ Styles. And as far as, like, wrestling goes, I mean, it's a really good match. Two total pros. 
And uh, Dom, but nothing. T- um, I mean, nothing like spectacular. It was like a great match, but they're two no, pros, it, and they were. I mean, there was there was nothing wrong with anything they did, but it wasn't like, oh man, you know, like, you know what I mean, like a match that, like, if you would have said this name, these two names five years ago, it wasn't that either. No, and it would have been much better as a pay per view match. This was a TV opener, and it was an angle as uh, Priest ended up grabbing. AJ's leg, right in front of the referee, by the way. So, you know, the old rule, well, the guy was in the ring, but he didn't touch anybody. No, he actually grabbed his leg and held on to it. Well, they, they booted him. This was not an EQ, but they, they ejected him. And then AJ went for the clash. But Jimmy Uso jumped up on the apron and distracted him. Finn rolled him up, got the pin, and that led to a segment, actually next, where uh, Finn meets with Jimmy and he says, uh, you know, thanks for the help, dog. And Jimmy says, uh, this had nothing to do with you guys. You helped me last week. I helped you this week. We're even. Payback for everybody that's done me wrong. And Finn says, you know, I saw your brother on Monday. Probably miss your brother, right? Well, we offered him a spot in the Judgment Day, and he didn't say no. So uh, what about the both of you join the Judgment Day? And Jimmy said, I don't know about that. And Finn said, uh, well, what's great about the Judgment Day is there are no leaders, meaning there is no Roman. And so he walked off, and Paul Heyman was watching, and he was not happy about that. We had the LWO in the ring, and then Ray said, A year ago, I came to SmackDown, had a rough time. Now I'm the U.S. champion. This family is stronger than ever. And Santos takes the mic and says, You know, Austin Theory hurt me. You stepped up. You won the title. My career dream has always been to face you, Ray Mysterio, with the title on the line. So will you face me for that belt? And that got a mixed reaction. There were actually people screaming no at Ray. And Ray says, after all we've been through, you want a title shot? And Santos says, I have nothing but love and respect for you. So Ray says, I feel the same way. Of course you can have it. And so out come Lashley and the Street Profits. And uh, Joaquin and Cruz challenge them to a fight. The match starts during the break. So I presume the Rock segment probably went long because there was some stuff that got cut. And they come back, and Street Profits, like, immediately win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a, like a, a one-minute match or something. It was like a minute after the break, yeah. Yeah. So then Lashley tells the Profits to jump him after the match. Ray and Santos try to make the save. They get killed as well. And uh, so they get laid out. And, man, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the Street Profits and, and Lashley. But these three together, the Street Profits seem like they were way more over before than they are now well they're they're heels they're trying to make them heels which i don't know is the right move i think i mean long term obviously the idea is for them to be baby faces and maybe the idea is is to do a turn but yet they are not gonna i don't think they're gonna be as over as heels as they were as baby face especially well both of them um, yeah, but the other thing is they had like a unique gimmick. Like I, I know they don't like you know he's wearing basketball shorts, but like he was the one guy wearing basketball shorts, and they had the cups and the fans, and they loved well, them yeah. and everything. Now it's like we wear suits, we're serious. I'm like I don't know if this is as over as that other act. It ain't gonna be as over. But the other the other the other aspect of it too is is that um, the the best stuff that Montez Ford does, and even Daw- that Dawkins does, is babyface stuff. Like you take that away from them, and they're they're two guys in suits. I mean, before I mean Montez is so spectacular and leaps so high, and you know they took away the frogs. I mean, you know I don't know they might give it back, but they're giving them this like double team generic heel neck breaker deal, double team move, taking away the frog splash and all that. Um, so yeah, you know they're um, they're trying to change them uh, into being heels, which surprised me. I because. You know, when they went together with Lashley at first, you know, it you didn't get the vibe. It was necessarily a heel thing, but obviously it is. And, um, yeah, um, you know, their charisma is, is definitely babyface charisma. Without it, it, uh, it takes away. But, again, they've done the other act for a long, long time. You know, in WWE, one of the things is, is that, at you know, after a while, they change. And very very often when they change it's for the worst but they change anyway i mean it was just like you know how like when they change the announcers i remember um you know one time it's like um okay they changed all you know and they just did it a couple weeks ago you know they changed all the announcers and i said why and it's like they just feel it's time for a change and it's like but this isn't better and it's like it doesn't matter they feel that you have to always change you know and sometimes you break up you know you like how many times have we seen them break up 
a really good act, and then after the breakup, both members of the act that have been broken up just flounder. They got nothing going on because their strength was the act. And this one, I mean, to me, Montez Ford's strength was, you know, just the mannerisms that they did and the high flying and the great athleticism. And you take away all the mannerisms and you take away all the high flying. And, you know, you could, you got 30 guys who could do that role. We had L.A. Knight versus The Miz. And uh, just a totally generic match. I mean, was, Miz. L.A. Knight's super over right he now. Is, he is super over, but you Miz know, The crowd doing was really the... behind it. The match is a match, you know? They were... They were they they were fine. They didn't they weren't bad. As they a were, match from a WWE standpoint, this was below average. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, Miz yeah, out there blow, throwing blow. the Daniel Bryan kicks. They look horrible. He throws the Daniel average. Bryan running knee. It looks horrible. L.A. makes a comeback. Hits his code breaker in the ropes. Miz kicks out, or L.A. kicks out. Miz has to do the shocked face, and finally Knight hit him with his move. And then yes, when it's over, the people are like all in L.A. Knight again. And he said from the day he stepped foot here on SmackDown, he was coming for gold. Doesn't care if it's Ray, Gunther, Seth, or especially, he says, Roman Reigns. Yeah. I'm coming for gold. No, sounds I like think they're doing be... that match. I, I, do, I do, too. I do, too. Yeah. Well, look, Roman Reigns needs opponents. He does need opponents until Mania season. Yeah. We had Solo telling Paul he was going to solve this L.A. Knight problem. Paul said, no, no, no. Cannot do that unless we get the order from uh, from Roman. And he says, we got to deal with this uh, Jimmy. Trying to cut deals with Judgment Day, picking fights with John Cena. You're going to have to solve all these problems. And Solo says, I know what I need to do. I'm going to go do it tonight. I'm calling it Down Granny's Memory Lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date, you know. I'm I more... see. Okay, this is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just no, said. no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the New Testament. Everyone, let her go. We lived on a farm ten miles east of Baker. <laughs> more <Yeah>. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say this is a new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm finding Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined a hundred dollars. No. Oh. It was Martels and Hebes. Hebes. Martel. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes. The daughter Alice. Uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what <laughs> what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.